This is Startup Storefront. I'm willing to bet you don't drink smoothies because they're too much of a hassle. You have to purchase multiple bags of frozen fruit from the grocery store, portion it out, blend it together, and then pour it all into a separate cup that I suspect is not even built for travel. It's just too complicated. With 80 years of family fruit expertise, Live More Organics has created the world's first 100% organic certified smoothie cup that can be delivered right to your doorstep. These high quality smoothie cups can be ready to drink in 90 seconds, making them ideal for those of us on the go. In this episode, we spoke with Julia Klein, the co-founder of Live More Organics, about why frozen bags of fruit are the problem, how fruit improves digestion, and why you don't need a million followers on Instagram to make an impact. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Julia from Live More. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks for having me. For people who don't know, what does Live More do? We launched the first organic smoothie cup, and we're making it really easy for consumers to get their fruits and vegetables. My family's been in the fruit business for over 80 years, and wow. we've used yeah, yeah a lot of time. the relationships with farmers and growers around the world to develop these smoothies. And people listening, so we just, uh, we're actually having the smoothie right now. I'm having the organic banana split, so is Owen. I'm having, having pineapple having passion. Pineapple passion, these are delicious. We made so them good. in about a minute. We also, you, you can use almond milk or water. Yeah, we just use water like with ours. Super delicious. I think the hard part of the business is probably, or I think in terms of what people might view as the hard part is getting like the fruit fresh and so I know we had talked about this at length, but like Mm -hmm. you freeze it. What's the process for just getting, so you have fruit relationships and then, and then you freeze them. Yes. And then you're, you're creating fun concoctions for people to, to have at home. Totally. So, I mean, my dad's kind of the smoothie king and he's probably made a hundred iterations of each smoothie. Um, so it's taken a while to get like the percentages, right. So it tastes good and it has the full nutritional profile that we're looking for. So each one might have more protein with hemp seeds or more greens with the spinach. So each one's designed to have more of a functionality and that's the way we're headed. But with my family being in the fruit business for this long, we have relationships with growers all around the world, which is really valuable, especially in this today's times where it's hard to even source one ingredient where we probably have five mango growers or five dragon fruit suppliers and we carefully choose our suppliers to meet our criteria so our cups are 100 percent organic so that's the first step is finding the right supplier partner that is organic and meeting all of our quality standards so i think a lot of products out there it's they, hard it's hard yeah to do. it's hard it's to, super to hard make to do sure that you're with using margin the highest yeah. quality and We've seen the success of this category and really looking to make it really easy for consumers to eat healthier. Um, like we said, it takes a minute to drink your smoothie. So what, when you first started, was the goal always smoothies or were you no. playing? Around? Okay. So yeah. what, give me, walk me through like a couple iterations, yeah, different so ideas you guys My dad tested. actually started this after mm-hmm. having really serious health issues and having to turn to healthier eating. So It started originally even as like fruit shots and it was like a way to get your vitamins, but we really- What's a fruit shot? So it was like, you know, five hour energy um, is out there and we tried to have like a healthier It's like a three, four ounce thing. Yes. And it it was like shelf stable and not really as pure as the smoothie. So we really went back to our roots and fruit and we've been in Costco now for five years with larger smoothie bags. So it's like a- berry blend it's still there today and it's a great product but it's not really where we wanted to be with the convenience aspect and making it really easy for those to like eat healthy and live our food as medicine type of um, values and mission so we developed these smoothie cups i'd say like two three years ago okay and And your dad's doing better now yes so (laughs) much better yeah he's like the cleanest eater i know and inspires me every day what did he cut out of his diet just out of curiosity um i would say his focus is really aligns with live more of like whole fruits and vegetables so instead of i mean he's been to so many doctors in his recent years and everyone's prescribing like antibiotics and all this western medicine and for him it was just like if you can see the ingredient, like no processed foods. And I think even with this industry, the plant-based space is growing, but there's so many ingredients in it. And so for us and him, less is more. So it's not that he's 
like fully plant-based or fully there's no like specific diet right but what's, it's, what's that new term it's called like low fod, glycine, or low low fodmart or fod art oh i've heard of it he was telling me about it it's like saccharides monosaccharides yes. polysaccharides yeah, yeah. and it basically is another way of saying as least processed as possible mm -hmm. less is more so really keeping it simple ingredients and i think like good milk does a great job of it sure. where you can see and that's what we blended the banana split with yep. so is good you should be able to pronounce everything that you're eating and everything right. that's on the front of our cups is on the back so okay. it's not like we're hiding anything and even the brands that are doing great still have cane sugar or a list of 10 20 ingredients where live more wants to keep it really simple where you can give it to your kids it's trusted high quality and that's really why I love our product so much is because it is so simple. When did yeah. you recognize that convenience was key? Because you said you have had it in Costco for like five years, but yes. these released a couple years ago. So what was that yes. switch and what caused you to So a few things. I would say when you ask someone, do you drink smoothies? They might say it's messy or it's a hassle. And for us, it's this is so much easier than buying single strawberries, single blueberries. Right. And all these different ingredients and making it yourself. So we started to realize that this is just the easiest way. And it's only one in 10 people, if you look at research out there, get enough fruits and vegetables. So we're like, how can we make this easier? And then we've also seen Daily Harvest do a fantastic job with that format. And they're just direct consumers selling these cups upwards of like $9. Mm -hmm. And our goal per is cup. Okay. per cup. And wow. you have to buy like eight or nine on a subscription, yep. which I think subscription's great. But personally, I probably wouldn't subscribe before I try something. And I think every consumer is different, but with Live More, we have an omni-channel strategy where someone like me who loves to grocery shop, I would go buy one, try it, and then maybe buy online after. So we're really trying to reach like the mainstream America. So when I look at this specific company and I think about any market, so if you, if you take any product and you go, okay, who's the behemoth in that space or who's the person doing it? And so in yeah. this case, Daily Harvest has carved out Totally. A niche where it's just like direct to consumer. So then my brain goes, okay, there's a person that's already done it and let's follow their approach. And so what is their approach? Obviously tons of social media. hundred million dollars on ad spend. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. But, Which but is it, helping us. Like we mm -hmm. had recently, was a plumber came into like my dad's house. He's like, oh, I see you guys on commercials all the time. And we're yeah. like, that's not us. But I'm glad that you recognize the format. Right. And so in yeah. that, in that case, you have someone who's already like not so much paved the way, but educated the totally. market for you. And so for you as a business to become more efficient, to me, the D to C play makes total sense as the, especially because you guys are competing on price mm -hmm. and because of your relationships, you're able to, in the fruit, in the farmer market, you're able to essentially beat them on price yeah, and not sacrifice quality, mm -hmm. which means to me, that's yeah. the strategy, you yes. know, because people I think are it's one aware. strategy. Yeah, it's us. a strategy for yeah. sure. Yeah. And it's yeah. important to us because I do think direct consumer is the future. And we were talking about before with like Ourobora and having that communication with your consumer. Like, I don't know who bought us at Bristol Farms yesterday, but could I have that communication with our community that bought us yesterday online? Yes. And could we get feedback so much quicker? Yes. So I think it is a great one part of the strategy, but I think we've had a lot of customers find us at Bristol Farms and then they buy us online. So we're finding that each channel is helping the other channel. So that has been really exciting to see. The fun conversation I always have since you're young is like yeah. the conversation between, you know, your dad who's effectively a co-founder mm -hmm. and his view on social media versus like your view on social media, yeah. right? He, like it even happens in this podcast where it's like, I'm in my thirties. Yeah. The team here is in their like early, early 20s. Mm -hmm. And they just, it's so much, it's different. It's different. You know, but it's like to me, I'm convinced it's everything for brands today, especially as totally. we enter like a recession. It's your best, I think, investment you can make in a business. I agree. But I feel like some of the older generations, yeah. like, what is this TikTok thing? But what's <laughs> crazy is I feel like both my dad and my mom are like so active on social media now. So, they so get I think it. the generation, not that they're posting a lot, but they know who the influencers are and okay, they get the it like yeah. before I will know someone like my dad might know that person before me and so he sees sometimes it like I'm the, like whoa the business how? side of it yes yeah. and he understands the importance of it and what's been so cool is I just got back from a trip in Hawaii where we launched into a lot of stores and I sat down for an hour with a micro influencer in Hawaii and it just just goes to show how powerful 
the Instagram TikTok channel is. And she was like, she was Miss Hawaii a few years ago and has this really, really strong cult following that follows her wellness journey. And I sat down with her and we had a similar conversation, like why live more? What are we doing in the world to make it better? And after she posted something being like showing her community how to make it, all of a sudden, like within 20 minutes, it was like, 80 comments being like, where do I get this? If And that just goes to show if you have these smaller micro influencers and they are trusted, you don't need a million followers in my opinion, but I'm sure there's ones that also have a cult following like that. But it was crazy to see how people trust this one influencer so much and they were like wanting it immediately. Where can I find it? So I think the influencer strategy is so important and for Live More, really finding the right partners and what's so cool about live more is it's not just for moms or kids it's athletes bodybuilders like smoothies have become such a big part of like someone's morning routine or afternoon that we're seeing that our consumers can't live without having a smoothie every single day they're like living me. less without live more yes That's yeah so exactly how would you describe your consumer because i see one yeah. is like the moms who would need something quick and convenient. Totally. Some of it's like a breakfast thing. Yeah. I could also see it like post-workout, high in protein. Like mm -hmm. who is your consumer in that sense? Yes, no, that's a good question. We have a few different types. I would say the moms and kids are really like our primary audience. Because they're on the go, like people they're on, on the, the go. They're on the go and okay. they're willing also. So back to your point about Daily Harvest and online, we're not that much less expensive, but online because you still have shipping, you still have dry ice. It's not a cheap product to send. Um, where it is easier to go buy one at the store. So we're seeing that the moms are willing to pay that premium price to feed their kids all organic and something that they trust. So yeah, I'd say moms and kids, huge. And we're seeing them on Instagram having fun in the kitchen and like literally three-year-olds are making smoothies and pulling them out of the freezer and being like, I can do this myself. And they're, they don't know that they're eating spinach because it's a smoothie that tastes good. That's um, how my mom tricked me. She put beets into all <laughs> yeah, of my Yeah, it's so much juices. better than a salad. Yeah, yeah, especially for kids who oh, don't beets? like salad. Yeah, she'd put beets in like tons of stuff and I had no idea. Fish oil too. Yeah, and it worked. And I had no idea. Always worked. Yeah, that's why you yeah. turned out the way you did. Is uh, hopefully. You're just like <laughs> eating healthy without knowing it. Could be good or bad. It. How do we know? Yeah, we don't, we don't know. know. We'll figure it out later. Yeah, so yeah. I'd say that's one demographic. Another would be someone probably like me, like a working individual that I just don't have the patience or the time or the mind capacity to chop up my own fruit in the morning. Whereas like my sister... I love her, but she's like this. She lives in Topanga and she probably could do an hour or two on her morning routine and cut the fruit and do an elixir and a smoothie and a juice. Whereas I'm just like, I'm out the door. Yeah, so I same. literally want to just grab it and go. So to that point then, so yeah. as, you, as you're, you're sort of, all right, you have smoothies and now you want to make it more convenient. The friction point becomes like the blender totally. potential, yeah. potential, right? And so and we've thought about that. We've been sent products that haven't made it to the podcast. Okay. Um, you're welcome listeners because <laughs> we, we try to use products. So if someone has a yeah. product, we'll try to taste it or have it before yeah. we talk about it because if it's, if it's a cool product, it's helpful in the conversation. And if it doesn't work, well, then we find out early. And so this one company had sent us basically a cup, you know, like this and you just blend it. So it's got a little, so built, blend it's it? got a built, it's got, but, but it's all built in. Okay. And so it looked like a little thermos, but it so was like a built the metal in things at the bottom and like swirls around and cuts it all inside the cup. Not a blender, right? It was a blender. Yeah. Oh, it's like what? a blender cup. Oh. And you would just charge I've it. I've never heard and of so this. So if you charged it, like basically it came with a little charger. Yeah. And so then during not the like, blender like, like that a, I showed you. No, hmm. like they, I don't think they exist anymore. But okay. basically, like Sounds it was, complicated. it was a little complicated. But it came with a dock, which was cool. And then you would just sit, put it on the dock when you weren't done. Mm -hmm. And then in the morning you take it with you. Okay. And so the idea would be you take this. Yeah. Right. You put it into that cup, and you take it with you to work, and then you just put it in the fridge at work or whatever. Okay. And when you're ready to have it, you add your water or your milk, yeah. whatever you want to add. Interesting. And then you just hit the button yeah. and it blends it. Interesting. Like, so demand. we've thought of but ideas broke, like that. Yeah. But it broke. This thing, <sighs> this thing worked like four times. Okay. It's not the longest term. And then broke. <laughs> Solution. And, yeah, no, it's tough. Yeah. But, but in that, I think for you, it's as a business, it's easy to kind of consider that a next step. Totally. But yeah. then there's also, you're literally jumping into a world that can ruin the whole experience. Yes, and we don't want to do that. So for us, we like the blender. And I know there's, I've seen our one of our competitors, they have a slogan that's like, break up with your blender. 
And I don't agree with that because... What are they doing that's... that's They have ready-to-eat smoothies. Okay. And so it's just like already jarred and ready to go? Yeah. And is oh. there a downside to that, like in terms of like the nutrients or, or yeah, anything? Yeah, so in my opinion and research and what we're seeing is I like to see what I'm consuming. So you're literally like we did at the beginning of this is like you see the bananas, you see the pineapple, you see the ingredients, and we're all about like whole fruits and vegetables. So if it's already blended up, you're probably adding a preservative and a gum right. to keep it, right. like maintain that Or if um, you're adding milk, the milk isn't clean. Yeah. It's so definitely for us, got gums, maybe binders. in the future, we would have something without a blender, but I think right now it's part of the fun. I know that some people are like, oh, still have to blend. But that's why the kids are jumping on the counters and like wanting to get involved because it's it's like a smoothie party and it's something that's fun and you see that like it's all about for us the transparency of what is in your product so like RX bar but it's all about it's only three ingredients it's only four ingredients yeah. I think good milk does that good milk does that yeah um and for us that's just like where we want to head um is keeping it is there really an opportunity to, to like partner with the blending company yeah is that definitely of interest because I, I would I imagine you like the beginning. yeah i just think about this like if i'm in the, if i'm in the blender business yeah how do i get people inspired to blend every day it's hard exactly. it's a hard problem and so it forces you to, to but this think is about a good collapse. conversation because even i think blenders have a misconception of being really expensive so like we have a vitamix both of us and yeah. we're talking about and that's how probably, much is a vitamix 500 bucks no. i think they're like four oh uh, i was gonna say 200 at like costco I have no idea. so i think it depends <laughs> where you're buying your blender over. but what's so cool four thousand dollars yeah, is we're yeah. not only trying to meet those that can have a vitamix now you go on amazon or i bought one in hawaii 49 dollars and it's like you're using that blender. Yeah, the ninja for a whole is pretty year. cheap too. Ninja, right? It's like eighty bucks with like forty different yeah. things. So I think as we grow, sizes. if we can partner with a blender or multiple blenders, it's a great way to I get see it this out as there. Like a QVC ad or a, like a pop up in Costco where it's like we can yeah. buy the blender, you get five of these, and you can try it once you get back home. Like Here, that yeah. in my head makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. As long I, as it tastes good, that's all people really care so about. So important that it tastes good. I think there's a few things, and someone yesterday had um told us like your product will be or has better chances of being successful if it one tastes good two the price is right and then three i mean i think it was like distribution points which the online direct consumer channel does solve because i'm talking to someone that i meet out Same, yeah bro. and they live in new <laughs> they live in new york and they're like where can i buy you and it's right, right. i can't send them we're not on wegmans yet so Go it's like you can't go to, you Costco, can't go to Costco unless yeah. it's in the LA region. So I do think if you're not playing in the national direct consumer space, like what are you yeah. doing? So for us, we want to be a national brand. We want to be in all the freezer doors, but also there's a lot of people that live, let's say in like Mammoth here, somewhere that you can't just go to a grocery store easy. And we see them buying a product more than others because it, they're not going grocery shopping. So it's just different consumers and how they're getting their product. Will you ever do this thing where let's pretend like I really just enjoy one flavor or like mm -hmm. you have customers that just enjoy one flavor. Yeah, and we have and, that. And instead of sending them like 10 or 12, yeah, yeah. you just send them a bag with a Good cup question. inside. And Great they can question. be like scoop and like a cup, like you can have the live more yeah. cup, right? And they just scoop it's it. It's a good idea. But I have, I mean, I you would say. You have a say, better solution? Let's well, go. Well, I would say that <laughs> we have customers and my dad and I will laugh because they literally buy 48 Strawberry Sunrise and we're just like yeah. seeing these giant packages of cups with <laughs> one flavor in it. Right. And we're just right. like, wow, they're addicted. And I've even, customers have called the off, like my office and said, hey, I'm going to my vacation house next week. Can you make sure I get 48 Strawberry Sunrise? Yeah. And I'm like yeah, we'll make sure. And they're like, yeah, I can't live without it. And I'm not even lying. Like they, I believe that. Yeah. I would like, be like that. Yeah. yeah. And they love one flavor and we're just like, wow, that's amazing that they don't get sick of this one flavor. But my, to what you had just said, I don't think that our consumers, the ones that are calling me and telling me how easy this is, are going to want a bag, take a cup. Okay. It's too much work. And I think that's one aspect of it. Second is we're really focused on sustainability and we've transitioned from a plastic lid to a paper lid, trying to eliminate the amount of plastic waste in this category. So you go into Ralph's and you look at the freezer set and it's so much plastic and it's just bags. And the problem with bags is that a lot of, if the temperature is not controlled correctly, it blocks up frozen. So I have bags in my freezer that I just don't use because like you have to bang it against the counter and like put it into the blender, like pre-portion out. We've done the work for you. So I think, yeah, just because it's easier and the now we're using way no plastic, 
um, and we're in that direction of finding more and more ways to better the planet and get rid of plastic, I think that we're just kind of going away from the bags. So that's how like our business started is bags and the shots like way back when, but now it's really just all about this format and being the smoothie people, especially in this format, yeah. The other thing I like about business today, and this is something that we talk about on the podcast a lot, is like whether you're in food. So if you're a food truck, you can partner with someone like Daring who makes plant-based chicken. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you have two brands that are collabing and both of you benefit from essentially the exposure of that, right? Mm -hmm. And so in your setting, it's the same. It's like you're making a fruit smoothie. You can use an almond milk by totally. Good Milk if you want. Yeah. You can use water by a certain water company yeah. if you want. And then the whole thing with Little Bucks, which is pretty cool too. Yeah. So right, right now, if you were to order smoothies, and I think we'll do this again in the future, is continue to do this type of partnerships and collaborations. But everyone that orders Live More gets a Little Bucks buckwheat packet so they can try it and put on their smoothies, which topper. I know you Which I did. I did. I yeah, did. It didn't topper. come, but I just had the pag from yeah. past episode and it, was, it added the crunch that I was looking for. Yes. No, that's yeah. great. But I think what you're saying with collaborations, yes, it's so important. And as we grow, I want to collaborate with very like-minded brands. So we're not like partnering with McDonald's or something. Like it needs to match you our... Wouldn't, you wouldn't do it? No. <laughs> sure? I want to say, no, yeah, no. Really? If they give us the opportunity, no. Oof. I think it's staying in our lane. What if they wrote you a nice check? No. What about like what about like a Panera? <laughs> or maybe, maybe actually, like, I take that back. Yeah. Not because of the check, but because I think that <laughs> we want to reach mainstream yeah, exa exactly America. Exactly right. So yes. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. If yeah. we were to like, they gave us the opportunity to launch in McDonald's, They would need a yes. bigger freezer probably. But because yeah. I think that what we're trying to solve is it's not easy to eat healthy sometimes. Like you go into a Starbucks because that's the closest thing to you like in your morning and you're like forced to eat a muffin or a bagel. Why don't they have smoothies? And I think that that's a huge problem in America and why is obesity rising so quickly? Because it's not accessible and easy and affordable. Not even the affordable because I think people would pay 50 cents a dollar more to eat better, but it, because it doesn't even exist in your neighborhood it's just not close it's and then you easy. think of jamba juice which they've done great but yeah. so much sugar so but much i grew sugar. up like going to jamba juice and having that as my like after school snack right so i think our goal with live more can we one day exist in airports gyms we have a, a couple things that i would love to say right now is like we're in um, venice <laughs> we just launched into a pop-up shop and we are like the smoothies are on the board i mean they're like $8, $9, so it's more expensive, but they're already blended. So there's no okay. blender that you need, but you come right. off the beach in Venice or you're walking out uh, at Kinney. So perfect. Go order one. So at the Plant X pop-up, which is really cool. And then also we're launching into hotels so that like in the morning we would be on a breakfast menu and you'd be able to order a live more smoothie. And the, I guess segues, like I have to have one every single morning because like my digestion feels so much better when I have a smoothie first thing because of this fruit first movement. Whereas if you start your day with fruit, what's the, yeah, tell us about yeah, that. Yeah. So and that's to, is... back to your question of like, who's your demographic. I would say this wellness community, especially in LA is really big on having fruit to start your day um, because it is high in fiber and digest. So fruit is the fastest food group to digest in your body. So if you have fruit in the morning before avocado toast or oatmeal, the other foods will digest faster or better after having fruit. So like I'll have a smoothie and then I'll have like coffee and then you have like, it's a lot of steps, but like it makes my, I used to you complain about bloating so much and now I, j I never have that problem, like knock on wood. But wow. I think if you guys ever feel bloated, like try a smoothie in the morning and then whatever you eat, like oatmeal or toast or bagel, whatever it is, it just digests better and you don't feel so bloated so i would say like that wellness community is like really big on that and we've had influencers want to partner on like pushing fruit first because it really does help people feel better i love it fruit first live more yeah these things become really easy from a marketing perspective you have like a like a dream event you'd like to throw i don't know That's if like question. i don't know if like festivals and smoothies mix but that'd yeah. be kind of be a interesting festival, yeah i right? saw so many brands at coachella this year i think yeah it's a great We've spoken way to a bunch of them but yeah if i'm in you know if, I, if i'm in coachella it's I super hot Dodger i feel Stadium. like something yeah i was gonna say owen yeah. oh yeah has my favorite shirt on ever but i would <laughs> say out. my dream event yeah like dodgers we i mean anything 
I feel like our consumers are at all these events and our goal is like live more, get out there, be active. So I think like sporting events or festivals. So easy. It's like yes. makes sense for the people working behind the counter. It's exactly. just poor, poor, you're done. It's yeah. Really so all to it your is. point of like partnering, I think you had said earlier with brands, I also think partnering with, I don't know if it's like Uber Eats or different like DoorDash because the we've been told that restaurants think it's a headache to make these smoothies and because they're already made for you and you just add water or liquid, it's like so much easier for food service to have these in their kitchen and then consumers can order the smoothie. So I think there's just so much opportunity. Yeah. Really. And that's kind of where even Starbucks. I exactly. Mean, yeah. yeah. That seems like a no brainer. Yeah. Do you, you don't go to Starbucks though, do you? No. Farm you Cup guys, all the way. I love Farm <laughs> Cup. No, it's so cute. Just from a funding perspective, obviously you self-funded it off the ground, but are yeah. you guys raising capital? How are you guys? We are. We that? have like an initial round right now before a Series A round coming up. So we have recently gotten quite a few investor partners that have gotten involved and really looking for strategic yeah. partners as we grow, especially in like I think Costco. We have so what's great about Livemore is like we have the relationships with the retailers, with Costco. But I think direct consumer is what we're just getting into now. And we see that huge opportunity with Daily Harvest doing $250 million a year. Um, if we get a few percent of that, I think Livemore will be very successful in that space. So yeah, we're just really on this great growth trajectory right now. It's interesting too. I mean, think about Daily Harvest and the news right now, as we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. Right. There's probably some pending serious lawsuits. It's yes. an opportunity for them to maybe no, buy you guys and then they can go maybe. into a different brand. Yeah. I mean, right now we're really focused on our lane and Daily Harvest has done a great job, but they're in all categories now. So they're almost everyone's competitor because they have flatbreads, ice cream, smoothies, but they've done a great job paving the way. And yeah, with the recent news, I would say it's just you never want to hear of a recall. It's like very scary. And for us, it just reminds everyone like how important health and like wellness is and how for us making sure which we do and we take pride in and it's a huge priority to us is like having the highest quality standards and traceability like if something happened with this cup it's like you should be able to go back lot by lot to the ingredient and figure out what happened and I think what's going on right now with them is they don't know what's happened and that's it's scary. scary yeah. Like I don't, I hate to hear that. And I think it happens quite frequently, but it's how you deal with it. And hopefully you have those safety standards in place to make sure that it won't yeah. happen. But so what's next for you guys? What, what are some big milestones you want to hit this year or even early 2023? A lot is happening right now. Um, I would say we're really excited about this launch into Costco and August Huge. and if we will you do, do the whole thing with like people making it the whole demos. blender yeah yeah, yeah. so okay. we're looking right now for a coconut water to blend with so are you gonna anyone... have like are you gonna hire like a like one of those guys that's so like I think the sham it's... wow yeah <laughs> yeah we should someone in like a fruit costume <laughs> That'd be cool. um yeah. yeah no but I think Costco like has their development the banana <laughs> yeah they have their own <laughs> demo people so we'll use someone at Costco but okay. I would say that's just one part of like what we're excited about and then our retail business is just growing quickly. We launched into Harmons this week in Utah, which is like a very well-known chain with 20 stores and the new seasons in Oregon. Smart and Final, we're in like 120 stores. Our goal right now is continuing to validate our assumptions and like our velocity and then can take that to the bigger guys. I mean, our goal would be we're in Whole Foods, Sprouts, like all the bigger stores and make it really easy because that's where our consumers are shopping. So I would say, one, continuing to grow our distribution points, but also, as you said, like we have the online. So it's not like we have to be in your neighborhood grocery store. It's about building, it really is about building our community of like-minded, like smoothie lovers that want to eat healthy and understand the importance of like taking care of yourself so that they can live more. And I think we just got Owen a part of our community. Yeah, she's got me hooked. Good. Yeah, yeah. It's delicious. I but mean, I think just continuing sure. to grow our community right now because it's like we just talked about, you look at Daily Harvest and the other guys and they have huge communities. And I think the thing is there's always room for competition. And if someone decides, oh, I like the taste of Live More Better, then welcome to our community. Like I think 
it doesn't hurt. You go to a grocery store, there's like five almond milk brands. It's how do you differentiate yourself? And I think for us, it's about getting our story out there, which is why I'm excited to be here. But it's, we're trying to do better for the planet and for our consumers. And we have a huge vision of like, how do we make the world a healthier place? And I think people like laugh at me when I say like, that is our vision is being in the places that we've talked about, like a Starbucks and making it right, accessible, accessible for like yeah. the mainstream American to be able to eat healthy. Cause right now it's like, there's kind of a divide. It's the air one customer or whole foods. And then it's like someone shopping on a budget, but how do we like bring those two together and make it where everyone can eat healthy because it's not, it's not that hard to do. It's just like making it easier. So I think there's just so many opportunities to grow the brand. And right now, I mean, like you talked about new flavors. I mean, we're always innovating, but it's really right now focusing on being the smoothie people and like staying strong with like our eight flavors right now. And that doesn't mean that we won't launch a new flavor in the next year, which we want to continue to do that. But it's becoming really well known as like the smoothie people because like who, I love it. yeah who That's do you think flag. of right now is like the smoothie people hopefully live more after this conversation yeah i just always think of like you just buy the big bags of fruit and it's really inconvenient but exactly. for me i was like oh you literally just the fruits in the cup you yeah. dump the cup in the blender and it's pour, frozen so you like see frozen, the which we didn't touch on i think that frozen a reason why we're doing it is because there's so much waste with fresh like i live alone and i will always go to the grocery store and overbuy things. Like I'll be like, oh, I'll eat like after my weekends out. I'm like, oh, I can have salad every night. So I'm going to buy a bunch of kale, a bunch of spinach, like fresh. And then it's like you end up wasting and throwing it all out. So with frozen, we have like a two year shelf life, which is not going to take you two years to drink our smoothies, but it's so much less waste with frozen. And it's still, since it's frozen at the peak ripeness, you still have the maximum nutrients in the ingredients. Tell everyone where they can find you. Yes, you can find us on our social at Live More Organics or on our website, livemoreorganics.com. And stay tuned as we have a lot of exciting launches coming up. And we're just really looking to make the world a healthier place and help people live better, live more. Thanks, Good. Julia. Thank you for having me. Hey, you. Yeah, you listening. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the episode. If you just can't get enough, check out our subscription on Apple Podcasts. For only $4.99 a month, you can listen to the full-length, uncut, unedited podcast episodes. We're giving out life-changing advice for less than the price of your morning coffee. What a deal. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, and we cannot wait to see you next week for another great episode. Cheers.